Hello from Uzbekistan in Central Asia. Today I'm taking an overnight train from the capital city of Tashkent to the ancient Silk Road city of Hiva. That's a journey of 14 hours and a thousand kilometers across the desert. If you'd like a glimpse of the train life, then subscribe to my channel and come along with me. The train ticket costs around 14 euros. You can check the timetable and availability on the Uzbekistan Railway website. In the past, it accepted payment only from Uzbekistan bank cards, but now there are a number of new payment methods. And if the website does not work for whatever reason, then pay a visit to the local train station and buy the tickets there in person. Word of advice, do so at least a week in advance. Tickets sell fast. On the day, a conductor will check your ticket and passport before letting you on the train. They will collect the tickets once the train starts moving. Each carriage has a separate conductor and they'll remember your face. Once inside the train, you'll find a maze of blue-covered bunk beds, joined by a long corridor that runs the whole of the carriage. If you're traveling in an economy class open carriage like me, then there are no doors and there are extra side beds in the corridor. The top bunks often cost a little less and the top bunks in the corridor are the cheapest on the train. And here's my friend's face when she realizes that she's got one of those. But it was all good in the end. <laughs> and she is not the only one. Many people would like to change their bunks. And the conductors make their rounds, offering their own room for an extra payment. But not everybody is disappointed. The top banks are a haven for the children. Personally, I prefer the top banks as well, because the lower banks convert into tables. And if you have one of those, you have to share it with the other passengers. If you get on the train at the first stop, then you will still find complimentary sugar and tea bags on the tables. I'll show you later where to get the water. Meanwhile, you have probably already guessed that we have departed. Long-distance trains are the perfect place to relax, because the internet cuts out within the hour and no one can get hold of you, be that work, family or long-lost relatives. I am struggling through the castle by Franz Kafka. People tend to bring their own food, but if you had no time to plan yours, then there are people walking back and forth selling food on the train. Those passengers that haven't done so yet are making their beds. Every passenger gets fresh linen sealed in a bag. And when leaving the train, they give it back to the conductor. You get a sheet, a blanket, a pillowcase and a small face towel. Despite Uzbekistan being a Muslim country, some of the passengers bring some vodka and share it with the others. At the end of each train carriage there are two unisex bathrooms. Right across from them there is a rubbish bin. Inside, the bathroom is rather small, but is equipped with everything you might need. A sink with soap, toilet with toilet paper and a few hand towels, but both quickly run out, so maybe bring a few of your own. It is a small space, but it's functional. There are also a few hooks for your face towel and clothes if you wish to change. The floor tends to be a bit wet, so do wear your shoes wherever you are on the carriage. There's just one trick to the water tap. You have to push up to get the water. The lights go off at 22 o'clock, but the train continues to make stops throughout the night. Anyone that gets off or gets on will probably shine a light in your eye at some point. If you don't wish to be disturbed, then bring an eye mask and maybe some earplugs. The morning brings views of an endless desert. The sand looks red in the early hours, and the young sun throws long shadows on the earth. The horizon is completely empty, and the world is entirely flat. For the other passengers, it is nothing strange, and I am the only one staring out of my window. In fact, many people are still asleep. At first, I was surprised to see that they did not use their linen, but these are the passengers that got on in the night. But what really surprised me is that someone switched on loud music at 7 in the morning. We could hear it all the way from the other side of the carriage. For me, surprises did not end there. It is cold outside. I have always associated the desert with the heat, but there is white frost on the sand outside. 
Meanwhile, on the train, it's the other way around. It's hot. And I can't understand how everybody else is wearing so many clothes. But they say that people in hot countries stay cool by drinking hot drinks. So it's time to get some tea. Remember those free tea bags? Let's get some water. On the other end of the carriage from the bathrooms there is a boiler. It is the only place in the carriage with drinking water. On Uzbek trains you can get free glasses and even a teapot from the conductor. Here are the ones I got for me, my friend. It's clearly working already because, as you can see, I'm already wearing a jacket. The package for the sugar cubes has a picture of the train station that we left from, the Tashkent Southern train station, and there are three sugar cubes inside. Pobratsky. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the desert outside starts to show signs of life. We pass a big but empty motorway and even cross a bridge over a river. I can't overestimate how strange this sight was. After hours and hours of the red and yellow sands, suddenly there is water. And after the river appear bushes and trees, and among them little houses. We are definitely approaching some train station. A train stop is a good opportunity for more sellers to get on the train and offer their wares. That means more food. So if you haven't packed breakfast, fear not, somebody will be coming around to sell you something to eat. Those small hard white balls are kurt, pocket-sized dairy snacks that have been enjoyed in Central Asia since the Middle Ages. Developed for long distances on a silk road in temperatures well over 40 degrees Celsius, these snacks are made to last. How long? Kurt can stay fresh for 7 to 8 years. And the passenger below proved such a good customer that the guy brought her some bread too. The other passengers took their time getting off and on the train. The train can stay at the bigger stops for up to half an hour, sometimes even 40 minutes. A perfect opportunity to go for a walk, stretch your legs and maybe buy some more food outside. And then the train starts moving again and we start to see agricultural fields. That is cotton out of season a few weeks earlier and it would have been completely white. On other fields, farmers are picking potatoes, and some fields are still green. And as the clock moves closer towards 11, we are finally approaching Hiva. There will be another video coming out soon with mine and Sivara's adventures in Hiva and in the capital of Karakal, Pakistan, Nukus. So, if you haven't done so already, then sign up to my channel, click the bell, and join us on our adventures. And travel more, it's good for the soul.